Hi guys, it's Nancy and I am basically reliving an old video when I first started this YouTube channel. I didn't have a very good camera set up and I did do a video previously on the Mini Mink versus the Laminator and the Laminator that I'm using is the Scotch TL901. You can see both of these machines are hot and ready to go. I have the Laminator set to 5 milliliters. Um, thickness which is um, gonna be a little hotter and then I have the mink set on three so to be fair we're going to do a couple different foiling mediums here and see how the two of them compare and I kind of have a little scoreboard on the side written down um, so the first thing we're going to do is this is just a toner sheet that I printed out with my laser printer. Again, it will not work with inkjet. It has to be a laser printer, and you want it set to the darkest, blackest setting. And all I did was die cut out two snowflakes. So, to be fair, we are going to use regular copy paper as our carrier sheet. Even though the mink has plastic carrier sheets, we're not going to use those today. So I have the die cut toner image. I'm going to put my foil shiny side up over it and we're going to put it in our carrier sheet and I have the mink set to number three come on I'm going in there all right and then I have my other one over here. And we're going to do the same thing with our laminator. Um, this laminator I got years and years and years and years ago, over 10 years ago. It works great. Um, I want to say I got it for $30. I think Target carries it. Staples probably carries it. But it's an inexpensive laminator. What's nice about the laminator is it will do full eight and a half by 11. Oh, I'm putting it in the wrong way. It goes in through the top. Um, it will do, um, you know, full sheets of paper because the, the area is eight and a half where the mink is, I think, six inches. Unless you have the large mink. Okay, so the mink is done. I'm open that up. So what happens is the toner gets reactivated with the heat and it causes the foil to stick. And I actually can put this through one more time. I'm going to do that just to cover these little edges here while we're waiting. And this is the holographic mink foil that I picked up at Tuesday morning. That clicking noise that you hear is normal. That is the rollers in the machine heating up like an old radiator. This is not feeding in. Okay, so this one was the laminator. And same thing, there's some bits on the end there, but I'm not really going to worry about it. And I would say, ooh, I think this one's a tie, folks. Pretty much flawless. It looks like in the middle there where it didn't pick up foil might be because of the foil itself. Yeah, it looks like there was a wrinkle in the foil. That is from the laminator. That looks great. That's definitely an embellishment that I would be using. All right, so back over here to the mink. All right, and the mink, also flawless. So I'm going to have to call this one a tie. They, they both look absolutely great. You cannot tell which one went through the mink and which one went through the laminator. So we're going to call that one a tie. I'm going to write that down. Okay. The next images that we want to do are, I got some 
Anna Griffin images from her Christmas set. This was sold with the mink last year. I'm just going to slice this piece of paper in half. some Anna Griffin foil on here. We have a nice green color. And it doesn't really matter, I've noticed, if you use American Crafts foil, Mink foil, Deco foil, Anna Griffin foil. There's so many different brands out there. They all tend to work about the same. I don't really favor one over the other. Where did I scissors? Okay. Okay, so again with the mink. Putting it through our plain copy paper carrier. And with the laminator, same paper, same foil. Try to make sure that there's no wrinkles in there. Send it through. And while that's getting ready, I'm going to cut the next piece of paper in half. And what we're going to do with that is glitter. Yes, that's right. I said glitter. Anna Griffin sells mink glitter sheets. Now with the glitter, you're supposed to change the setting to five on the mink. So here is the Anna Griffin printed toner sheets. Ooh, there's some bubbles in that one. I didn't. I think part of that is because of the um, carrier sheet. Because when you use the plastic sheets, it comes out better. But every part there was toner and there was glitter is foiled. Every little detail is foiled. So beautiful on that one. the laminator same thing every piece is foil now there are some blank spots in here um, more so than the mink especially in the centers there there's definitely a little bit more gaps in the laminator versus the mink. In other words, I think there was more coverage in the mink. You can see too on the solid spots where it's very solid with the mink and with the laminator, there are tiny microscopic spots where the toner can come through. So on this one, it's a close call, but I'm gonna call mink on this one. More full coverage on the mink than there was on the laminator. So on the Anna Griffin printed die cuts, I'm going to say the mink wins that one. Okay, the glitter sheets. Now, it's been a while since I did these glitter sheets. I think I just cut these to fit. Now it does say you're supposed to turn the mink to five. I'm gonna leave it at three just to give it a fair comparison to the laminator. If it doesn't work out, we can always run it through again and change it to five. I 
will tell you the mink does not like the paper as a carrier sheet. I think the um, the car the plastic carrier sheets that come with it are better. Okay, laminator, designer paper, glitter sheet, and this is not ordinary glitter. This is um, glitter designed for the mink machine. I'm going to turn the paper over and run it through again on both machines. Just because it's glitter, it needs to have a hotter setting. Okay, so I'm gonna flip this over. All right, I'm going to turn the make machine off because this paper is stuck in there. The carrier sheet, oops, didn't mean for that to happen. There's actually an unlock button on the back of your mink right here, which loosens your roller so you can pull the paper out. So you can see that was going on there. The laminator got three runs. The mink got two. I'm going to need a new carrier sheet here. Let's see how this looks. Not too bad. Not too bad. I think maybe too many times in the mink machine when it got stuck under the rollers there. Okay, well, Mink Machine wins that one, even at setting three. The laminator just cannot get hot enough to get the toner to get that glitter to stick. So the Mink Machine wins on that one. The toner didn't work. Now, just for giggles, I'm going to change this to setting five. This was the one that was in the laminator. I'm going to use the Mink Carrier Sheet. All right, and once that's set ready, it'll light up green. Okay, so we're gonna feed this through. So this was the one that failed in the laminator. We moved the mink to five, which is what the instructions say to do for glitter, and put it in its carrier sheet. And that looks pretty good. They're about the same. So still the mink wins out on glittering. That is very messy glitter though. There is glitter everywhere with that. You could probably see how it picked up that glitter off of there. Okay, the next couple of experiments are going to be with stenciling and stamping. So what I did was in terms of stenciling, I took a snowflake stencil, which I just showed in my previous video from the Crafters Workshop. I got it at Simon, Simon Says Stamp. And it just has some snowflakes on it. And I did two things. 
The first one is with reactive paint. The second one is with reactive screening. I will tell you, I think these are misnamed. The paint is very much a gel consistency and it is very thin. It is not a thick consistency. I mean, there you can see it there, it's just squirting out everywhere. Okay. The paint is a much, the ink, I'm sorry, should have been called paint. This is a much thicker consistency. You can see there, it's almost like a liquid glue. Um, so in using these through a stencil, the reactive screen ink was much easier to spread out and use the stencil. The reactive paint, because it's thinner, kind of seeped under the stencil. Um, the reactive paint is also very, very sticky and gooey. Um, the reactive paint was more, or the reactive ink was more like a paint. So I think they should have switched the names on these. So to show you the two of them, this is the reactive paint gel and it is still kind of tacky and this is the reactive ink which you can see is white and it's much thicker um, almost like embossing paste now neither one of these is dry yet so I'm going to pause the video and take my heat tool to them and see if I can get them dry because these won't work until they are dry the last thing I did was I took some of the reactive paint and put it in one of these distress ink pads, okay? It does dry quickly, but what it did was it gave me an ink pad that gave me a way to ink up a stamp. So I inked up a stamp with this and I stamped it out. Now, this is an older Stampin' Up! Christmas Snowflake dot, uh, stamp. It's very important that you clean the stamp and your stencils immediately because this stuff is very sticky and you don't want that drying on your materials. So I'm going to take a heat tool to some of these things and I will be back in a minute. <laughs> 